Hello and welcome to Gaming Like It's 2019. Today we're going to be playing Car Mechanic Simulator 2018. Let's jump right in and take a look. The game has a tutorial and it's pretty bad. The tutorial drops you in a fully stocked garage with no instructions and you basically go up and if you happen to highlight over the correct piece of equipment, it will throw up a sheet explaining in words, not pictures, what that piece of equipment does. So you're really kind of thrown in on the deep end. So your orders come in via the phone. So I'm gonna click there. This thing in blue is a story mission. Um, that will tend to be a little more complicated than your missions that you run for money and experience points. In some situations, the game will tell you what exactly has to be done. In other situations, you need to inspect visually and try and figure it out. So for example, this is not an engine job, but let's take a look at the engine. You could see the engine has all sorts of different parts here. The red here means that I can't take that off. I can't take this distributor cap off until I take off these ignition wires. Likewise, if I want to get down into the engine block, there's a lot more pieces that need to be disassembled. Um, in fact, let's do that here, even though th that's not what this car is here for. Just like a real auto mechanic. You want to remove something, it's as simple as holding the mouse button and they come away. We can now remove the cap. No, we can't because there are clips. So we need to remove the clips. Remove the cap, remove that, etc. And if you don't want to remove those, which in this case we don't, we can go ahead, put those right back. If you have more than one part, it will tell you which ones you can use. In this case, we only have the one. I'm going to put the clips back first. I like to do everything in as close to reverse order as I can. There we go. All right. So we're going to go start taking pieces out. Hopefully I won't take out too much. I think I said rear tail light, right? If I take out the door, the window will come with it, which is nice. Rear left door, front left fender, that's that. Just gonna take that off. What does it look like when you're doing something other than a body job? Let's take a look at that because I think that's kind of important. And we'll take this. All right, so now this is a job where we're not really worried about the body of the car. We're worried about what's on the inside. We can get in the car, we can start it. Seems like it had some trouble starting there. You can listen to the engine. You could also take the cars for a test drive as well. well I'm not gonna do that right now. We're gonna first thing first, move this car. Well, first let's look at what's wrong with it. Okay, so we've got poor brake performance and we're not sure why that is yet. That's why we see this part not discovered. We see that the transmission is not responsive and the gearbox is having trouble. So overall, we know there's gonna be some gearbox things and some brakes things. So in either case, we're gonna need it up on the lifter. So we'll move it over to the first lifter here. And we will lift it up a little bit. And before we send it all the way up, let's just take a look at where the gearbox is from up top. Very often, that's the gearbox. Parts that are more damaged will be rustier. It makes it fairly easy, unlike a real mechanics job, to see what's going on. Sometimes this starter, the starter needs to come off in order to get at the gearbox. Sometimes the starter has to be removed from the engine bay. And in this case, we actually have to get it from below. So let's... Get out of here, and let's actually lift this up now. All right, now with the car lifted up, we can go underneath. So you have a number of tools here 
to figure out what's going on with the car. For one thing you can do, which is kind of cool, you can make the car transparent. Wouldn't that be useful? And you could see all of the components there. You could also go into what's called examination mode. So let's say I was concerned about these mufflers. You look at them and it will turn a different color depending on the state of that particular piece. Now we know it's not the mufflers, we know it's the brakes. In fact, just taking a lucky look there, I feel like that brake looks awfully rusty, doesn't it? All right, so now I've identified a bad part. What we can do is we can add it to our shopping list. All right, let's go. We'll do the brakes later. I kind of want to do the gearbox first because I think that's more interesting. All right, click on the engine here. Click on the gearbox to focus on it. So we can see that in order to remove the gearbox, we need to remove this starter and then this transfer case. Oh, this is exciting. So I have not worked on an all wheel drive car before or four by four. So this is gonna be my first time. Hopefully it won't be too embarrassing. We're gonna just remove the starter. And now this is where it starts to get interesting. You can see it's attached to the gearbox by these bolts. And in the most satisfying mechanic ever made in any video game, you remove the bolts. It is so intensely satisfying, I can't even put it into words. Um, now, if you've ever worked on a car or you know, in my case, a motorcycle, it is, this is the most miserable thing you'll ever have to do. Because the first few things you do, sure, it might be as easy as this, but by the time you get down into the engine, into the crankcase, whatever bolts you need to get at are, first off, not reachable, second of all, frozen in place, third of all, your tools are terrible. Um, it, it's just really not great. Uh, but in this game, you can always reach the pieces you need to reach. Okay, so we've got the transfer case connected to the gearbox. Let's go ahead and examine these just because I'm sure they're going to be bad, but also that one has to be taken off the car to be examined. Okay, fine. Okay, so this is connected to this, which the front drive shaft, that can come right off. And up here, as you remove it, it tells you what its condition is. So that front drive shaft is in my inventory now. And it's 81%. Uh, so this piece does not need to be replaced. So now we're going to take off the transfer case. Very satisfyingly remove some bolts. And we can see at 12% that does need to be replaced. Same with the gearbox. So now we can see that there's all sorts of, so I don't really even need to examine these. I'm positive they're going to be bad, but let's take a look anyway. We'll, we'll be, um, oh, the flywheel is not, uh, doesn't need to be replaced. That's good. All right, so let's go back to remove. We're gonna add this to the shopping list and remove it. We're gonna add this to the shopping list and remove it. You don't have to use the shopping list. I just find it helps me keep track a little bit when I'm actually purchasing replacement parts. And this one has to be bad, right? Yeah. And remove it. All right, so we could go further in here to the engine. Uh, I don't think we need to. Can I examine the crankshaft here? With the compression tester. Oh, I, so there's actually a, a part called the compression tester that you can use while the engine, while everything is still together. Um, but now that I've taken it apart, I don't know if it will. I just got the, unlock this piece of equipment. So I don't know that I'm gonna be able to use it. Let's try it. 
Oh, maybe I can. Engine needs to be complete. Oh, well. I'm not used to using the compression tester because, like I said, I just unlocked it. Okay, so now we've we found a bunch of these parts. We can look at our checklist. And we can see that we found all of the parts dealing with the clutch. And, uh, and we need 65% to... We need pieces that are at least 65% okay. So what can we do? Well, we could go to the junkyard. We might have one or two of these in stock already because for a previous job. We also can try to repair the equipment you have over here, your repair table. Now, I haven't figured out what certain things you can repair and certain things just don't show up on the list. And I have not figured out what exactly makes uh, something show up. So let's just take a look. And sadly, none of the pieces we just picked up are on this list. So I can't repair it. But if you if you could repair it, you can click on it and try and repair it. It will cost you much less to fix things than to buy new ones. Uh, although not less to buy um, cheap ones, used ones at the junkyard. But the junkyard pieces tend to be really bad. So to order pieces, you come over here to your computer, or later on in the game, you get a skill to do it from the car. I guess you get a little iPad. Let's do that. We're going to open our little iPad here. And these are all the stores that we can use. 90% of your time, you're just going to be in the parts store. So up here, we have our shopping list. Uh, gosh, I thought I added way more than that stuff to that. All right, let's do it anyway. We're going to get some clutch-related stuff. We'll grab the clutch plate. We'll grab the, the pressure plate and the release bearing. I'm positive we needed a gearbox. Uh, unfortunately, I no longer remember what gearbox it was. So I'm going to have to go back to my inventory and look at that. We're going to grab some brake caliper parts, even though I already have some in stock. And I'm sure we're going to need a brake pad. And in fact, that's the type of thing that you go through so many brake pads. Might as well buy a few of them. All right. So what was this gearbox? Gearbox V8 and a transfer case from a 4x4. Okay, we'll do that again. Gearbox. Gearbox V8. And you can see there's a lot of different gearboxes. You don't want to buy the wrong one. Those are expensive. And a transfer case. 4x4. Those are expensive, man. Wish I could have fixed those. All right. That's the rear end of the car. There we go. All right, so now we're going to switch back to part mount mode. We're going to start mounting all of those parts, the nice versions. This is the old one. This is the new one, 100% condition. Nice new clutch. A new pressure plate. And you can zoom in here so you can get some amazing fastener action. Release bearing, I think, just snaps in. Gearbox has to be screwed in. Yeah, I wonder if there's a hard mode for the game where you have to actually maneuver the camera so you could see the bolt that you're screwing in. Developers, if you heard me say that, please don't do that. That, that would be awful. All right. Ah, camera's messed up a little bit here. We'll click there to recenter it. We can put the starter back now. That's just a couple of bolts. And the transfer case. Make sure we're using the new one instead of the old broken one. Now that front drive shaft has to go back. Yes, I think that is all of the transmission problems sorted. And I'm going to leave the drive shaft, the main drive shaft off right now, because if I need to fix one of these pieces, I'll just end up having to take it off again. So let's check our checklist. 
All right, so now we, we're starting to get some finances here. Yes, I know, it's, it's, it, the game was almost made for me, right? It's, I'm gonna have a new business running an auto mechanic and bookkeeping shop. So here you can see we've done all the tasks associated with these two tasks, subtasks. And as a result, we're making some money. So we've spent this on equipment, we get a bonus for having successfully completed that repair, and we have a total payout. So if I put the car back together, we could finish this job if we didn't feel like doing the rest. But let's go ahead and finish this brake job. It doesn't look too big, so seven parts total. We already have the brake caliper. Let's just look at these calipers. That looks okay to me. Let's do that. That's fine. Ah, okay, so that one needs to be shopped as well. If I don't have it, I might have an extra one. And it said that you could do crappy ones. Look at some of these pieces. I suspect it's just gonna be calipers and brake pads. In fact, can I see the brake pad from here? It doesn't look like I can. I'm going to have to take off the tire. Extremely satisfying sounds. All right. So let's take a look here. That's fine. Yep, that pad. All right, let's take off the take off the caliper. Caliper is fastened in the back usually, right? And we'll take off the brake pads. The disc is not looking great, but they're saying that it's okay for now. So let's leave that one. Oh, you know what? We're right here. So why don't we put on a new caliper? What's the minimum here? 65%. Not assemble mode, I don't know what I was thinking. Normal mode. Okay, so brake pads. I've got a bunch of brake pads because I just bought them. And then the caliper, 65%. Oh, it's just a little too low. Ha, huh, I could use that one. Cheap out in the job. You can just do this from the front. You don't have to go all the way back. Now I'm kind of doing this piecemeal. If the job is big enough, it's it's almost inevitably worth it to strip the car completely and not put anything back until until you found all of the bad parts. The kind of worst failure mode in the game is when you take a car apart fix most of the parts, put it all back together, and then realize there's one like tie rod or something inside that you didn't get to. All right, let's take a look at, that caliper looks great. And I think I used my one caliper, so I'm gonna buy another. I should really just keep calipers in stock, frankly. No, this one's coming off. Okay. And that brake pad is bad, I think. 20%. Yeah, that's bad. And what did we find with this? That's fine. That looks okay. There's a bit of a mystery here, because I don't notice anything else that looks horrible. Could be a shock, right? Well, we can replace the caliper for now.
And you don't damage parts by putting them on and off. Again, unlike in real life. Uh, so if you do have to go back in, it's not the end of the world. And I'm not going to put that wheel on just yet. Let's see what we're, what's what here. So we have two more parts. It's possible that there's some performance problem with the ABS system. And in fact, looking at that ABS module can be examined by an OBD. Do I have an OBD scanner? Maybe I do. Let me take a look. Tools. OBD scanner. There we go. Well, we hook up to the car's computer. We get a little report. All right, so the ABS module has got to get replaced. That's both good and bad. It's good because it's a nice, easy repair. It's right here in the engine bay. We can just take it out. It's bad because there's still one more part out there that needs to get replaced, and I don't know what it is. But we'll do this one in the meantime. Two pads and two calipers. I'm relying very heavily on visual inspection. That. Oh, there we go. Maybe. Let's lift it up and take a look over there. Uh, it may kill your OCD a little bit if you're like me to send cars out as fixed with all of this rust. Unfortunately, you don't unlock sort of uh, the ability to fix body, pa body panels until fairly late in the game, which is a real shame. I don't know. I don't see anything here. I thought I saw something on like a tie rod that looked bad, but I think I was just misinterpreting. That's fine. That's fine. This is kind of the worst because in this situation, what you'll end up having to do, if you feel that you need to do it, is you'll end up having to basically take apart the entire car to find the problem. And I am definitely not going to do that today. I will happily send this car out with the one job undone. And I'll still come out ahead. And I'm mostly doing this at this point for experience. So, all right, so this all looks fine. The front end actually looks pretty good. This, that's the one thing there. I, I really, I don't want to take the steering rack off. It's going to be a pain. And it doesn't look that bad. Maybe I will have to, but let's, let's look at the back end first some more. this wheel so we can get a look at the disc looks okay caliper looks okay how about the brake pads it is poor braking it's the brake pads who would have thought that poor braking performance might be because of bad brake pads alright there we go back with a new one. And, oh, I can use a lesser part. <laughs> the customer will never know. Actually, will it penalize me? Because I took off a good piece and put on a bad one. No, they have no idea. Oh. Today in Unethical Auto Repair Shop. When I was a kid and my dad taught me to change a tire, um, 
he, he was uh, he was absolutely mad, absolutely insistent that when you were especially putting on, but putting on or taking off these bolts, you had to go in a star pattern. If you went like, so, you know, one, two, three, four, five around, the world would end, your tire would fall off, your car would explode. And so to this day, I still kind of draw a little pentagram whenever I put tires on or take off cars, take them off cars. In real life, I do this. How our parents break us. Okay, so now we're all done. Uh, at this point, we could just uh, just send the car back. We could we could say we're done with this job. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you what uh, what the test track looks like. So once you've fixed these cars, you can do things with them. So you could have your own cars. So that black car over there, that's my little car. Um, you can go to various places in the game world. So here we're gonna say drive the car. You can see we've got the junkyard, various types of tracks, car salon. Oh, interesting, that just unlocked for me. I have never been to the car salon. There's a racetrack, but I am just gonna take it to the test track. Which one we wanna take this one, the one we're Ha ha ha, I forgot to put the drive shaft back. Well, it would have been embarrassing to give it back to the customer in that condition. So I'm glad we checked. Okay, let's try this again. Test track. All right, we're on the test track, the car is going, and there's basically four sections of the track sequence. One of the interesting decisions in the game that I think they were doing as a clever dodge was almost every car that you're driving is a big old American boat. <laughs> there's no, uh, ah, there's no, I'm using the keyboard and mouse to do this rather than a controller, so it's a bit fraught. Um, there's no, there are a couple of small Japanese cars in the game, or Japanese-ish since they're fake. But I do wonder if the choice to drive big old American cars is a way of kind of justifying or hiding the sloppy suspensions and the, the, the kind of weak steering on a lot of these cars. I, I think it was, that's my belief. So there are two other games if you find this one compelling. One's called Tank Simulator or Tank Mechanic Simulator, and the other is Plane Mechanic Simulator. The Plane Mechanic one does not seem to have been actually finished, but the Tank Mechanic game is fairly highly regarded. Um, I've only scratched the surface of this game. Um, most of the parts we took apart, other than the gearbox, were fairly self-contained, but you actually can disassemble an engine down to the, down to the pistons. <laughs> and down to the fasteners, the, the rod caps on the pistons. So it's pretty impressive. Um, if you've ever actually worked on an engine, this is, you know, it's easier. I'm not going to say it's realistic in that sense. But the parts are all there, other than the gaskets. The, no gaskets that you have to worry about that I know of. Um, so you see, we've done our test drive here. And by doing that test drive, I believe we get a report that kind of tells you the condition of things. So this is a way to do a kind of more holistic evaluation of a car. Uh, it's worth doing sometimes. All right, so with that, we're going to put away this car and you'll see that we'll get a little more money and possibly a little more experience. And then th I'll talk about the experience and then, that's the, and then we'll bring this video to a close. All right, we made seven grand on that car, not bad. Okay, uh, so we did get some experience. We did not go up a level yet, but what the levels do is they unlock bonuses and tools. So some of these bonuses are getting discounts in shops, unlocking you know the ability to buy things from the store while you're at the car, various types of testers, and they also unlock your larger garage. And there's a pretty... Uh, a pretty 
pretty deep tech tree here. My understanding is that everything really interesting is unlocked by level 35, which is when you get the ability to repair body parts. Um, interestingly, a lot of the promo videos for the game focus on painting and uh, repairing the body parts. And so it's kind of a bummer that you have to wait that long to unlock those skills. But it is Look, this is one of the most chill games I've played in a long time. It's super relaxing. <laughs> it's just, it's it's really cool. And uh, I really recommend it. I think, you know, I picked it up in the Steam sale for six bucks or whatever. But frankly, you know, it's 20 bucks on Steam. I think it's 20 bucks well spent. So Car Mechanic Simulator 2018, available on PC and Mac. There is a Car Mechanic Simulator 2021 coming out later this year. So far, that is only on Windows, and the release date is unclear. So I would say that if, if this type of activity looks like it floats your boat, uh, I say pick it up today. Thanks for watching.